Hey all, it's Tom. Um, you know, we talked about this book series and we talk a lot about uh, survival, uh, prepping, you know, the SD, uh, SHFT thing. And you know, I heard a lot of people talking about food storage, food storage, sorry, ammo storage, guns. Skills. Uh, bunker in, bunker out, bob out, baby, whatever, bug out. Let's use some common sense. Let's just see you bump your bug out. Now, you're, you're out of the defensive area. You don't know where you're headed into. You don't know what's around the next corner, what's around the next rock or sitting in a tree waiting or on the ground, trap-wise waiting. So now, now you're in a combat zone and now you need combat training. You train your body how to watch for trip wires and, you know, scan the tree, the ground, and what's ahead of you. All at one time. It can be done, but it needs training. Now, with all that being said, that's all true. You know, nobody thinks about animals. I haven't heard one person mention animals. Now, here's the scenario. Short term and long term. Let's just say, um, an EMP, electrical magnetic pulse attack, kills all the batteries. There's no electronics, there's nothing. Anything that runs on power and batteries is dead. So that means the power grid goes down. Do you realize most of the prisoners in prison are locked behind uh, powered doors? Now, they do have a secondary lock system. But, hypothetically, maybe some of the, the older prisons or something don't, so now we're releasing a lot of criminals who doesn't give a shit if they kill you or not. Zoos. Zoos harbor deadly animals. Crocodiles, lions, tigers, polar bears, gorillas, snakes. Now, power goes down and their doors are unlocked. They will get out of there eventually. So now you're bugged out. You got to worry about the human contact. And you're going to have to worry, you really are you're going to have to worry about animal contact. The farther out you live from a zoo or something like that, you're, you're probably better off. But sooner or later, them animals will make their way away from where they're at. Think about it, you know, a, a gorilla. Imagine meeting a, you know, Five, six hundred pound gorilla in the woods. With that being in mind, keep that in mind. Most of these survivalists and the preppers and everything I hear about, they're going out there with 223s, 5.56 five, AR 15 stuff. 22s. Okay. We run into a lynx. Lynx are a little bit bigger than bobcats. 22 ain't going to do much damage. It will kill them, yeah. I have no doubt it will, but, you know, you might get messed up in the process. You're carrying a 5.56, five, and let's just say you, um... 
run into a polar bear. The Alaskans do it. The them Eskimos up there hunt wolves and everything else with five five six. But you don't. So it's scenarios like that you really got to think of. Like me, I, I live about 25 miles away from a place called Claws and Paws. It's an animal petting zoo. How that place had dangerous animals. I'm only a couple of days walk for them animals for me being in danger here. You know, you also got to think about if this whole thing goes down and the animals do escape, you got rhinoceroses, you got elephants. Now, what all the animals we're talking about, nothing's ever mentioned about insect population. As people die and they decompose, the maggots will take over and flies will begin to... Oh boy, are they going to be a nuisance. Mosquitoes, because nobody spray in the waters. So now insects are going to start to be a problem. Cockroaches, cockroaches can survive a nuclear attack. So... Cockroaches, spiders, snakes, all the point, all the, you know, all the venomous snakes, there's not going to be any human contact around to keep them under bay, at bay, I should say, or anything like that. So now they're, they're going to go. You live in a warm area like down in Florida, they have the cotton mouths, they have coral snakes, they have diamondbacks, they have, uh, well, they're not poisonous, but they have pythons. They've got all kind of animals down there that just, they can hurt you. Python can't kill you necessarily, but, you know, he can bite you. You can die from the infection. Alligators. Nothing keeping the alligators under under wraps. So in a couple of years, alligator, you know, they could be, they could explode to the point where they'll be walking down Main Street. What are you going to do about it? You're going to need a big gun for any of this. I mean, you, gorillas and lions and stuff like that, you know, the guys over in Africa, they hunt them with uh, 375 Holland and Hollands, 404 Jeffries. Big guns. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that you ain't going to have. Now, I've heard that the minimum that somebody would need to stock with a, a 30 out 6 to protect themselves against stuff like this. Not a 308, a 30 out 6. A 30 out has just a little more oomph than a 308. But now, I think a 30-30 would be all right. I really do. A 30-30 is a good round. It kills anything from, well, it has killed anything from moose to polar bear. Not the best round, but that's all you have. Yeah. You got insects, zoo wild animals. Let's take a look at domestic animals. Where I live in this, this complex here, there's got to be at least 20 pit bulls. Quite a few German Shepherds. And other uh, animals like that. Once this all happens, dogs are going to get loose. Now you got wild dogs. I've had run-ins with wild dogs in the past. They're nothing to mess with. Dogs are a hard kill. So, 
you're out there with your AR-15 and you run into a pack of 15 or 20 wild dogs, they're running at you. Number, number one, you got to hit a moving target in the head. They're running at you. You know, your chances are you're going to get bit. Nobody ever talked about rabbit animals. Not rabid, rap, not rabbit, rabid. You know, it's a disease that affects the mind. The animal goes nuts, and if you get it, you could die. All you need to do is get bit or get some of that in your in your in your eyes or your mouth or something like that. The slobber from their face because they they drool and slobber. You can get infected and die. There's no cure for it. If you well, there is a cure, but you you know you probably won't have it. And after a certain many days, they can't cure it anyway. I think it's five days. There's no cure for it. You're done. So these are all things to think about. These are all things to think about. You, you really got to put your mind to it. Expendable stuff, like bullets. <coughs> Cordage. Pepsi, please. Cordage, um, you know, stuff like that. It's all going to go away. This goes back to the bushcrafting skills of learning how to make cordage out of, you know, different animal, different plants. And also animals. You know, if you take the intestines out of a squirrel, you got about 12 foot of cordage. You let it dry, and you clean it out, of course. You let it dry, pound a little bit to soften it up, or chew it to soften it up, and it's cordage. Or an absolute pinch, it's food. But the wild animals population is going to be terrible. The insects are going to be terrible. So you're going to have to deal with all of that besides the people in your own uncomfort. Just something to think about. Something to be prepared for. Because honestly, you can make all the cabins and shelters you want out in the woods. It's not going to protect you much from most things. Personally, myself, I would find a cave to reinforce the front of, and uh, it could be really hard to get into a you know a, a rock formation. You could probably reinforce the front of a cave with enough rocks and, and heavy timber to you wouldn't have to worry about it. So, just a thought. Anyway, this is Tom. I want to thank you for your time and your patience. Hit the like button, please, because it puts me on the algorithm. And don't forget to share it out and sub if you're not subbed. And we will see you guys on the next one.